Hi everyone, I'm Renee and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little different than my regular content. I have a recipe to share with you, but it's not a traditional recipe. This is a keto recipe for cookies. Back in January this year, I started adopting a keto lifestyle and shortly after a lot of my family did too. Now we still have holidays and birthdays to celebrate and occasionally we just want a yummy treat. So I started experimenting with baking because I'm a baker and I love to bake. So I experimented with keto recipes. Now keto means this is a sugar-free and low-carb cookie, but you'll never guess that they were sugar-free. If you're still looking for my traditional content, I still have great cake decorating videos and recipes coming to you, but I wanted to start incorporating some keto recipes because it represents the lifestyle I'm currently leading. Now if you're ready, let's get started. I'm going to show you how I make my browned butter keto chocolate chip cookies. The first step in making these brown butter cookies is to brown the butter because it's going to need time to cool. So I'm cutting up two sticks of butter into smaller pieces because it's going to melt faster and putting them into a heavy bottom pan. Then I'm going to take this over to the stove and heat it on medium to medium high heat. You want to keep an eye on this because you don't want to burn the butter. So I'm just moving it around to melt it and eventually it's going to start simmering and you'll see it get foamy. That's all the milk solids coming out of the butter. Just keep an eye on it and it helps to move it around because you're looking for this beautiful golden color. You'll know it's ready because it will be a deep golden color and smell deliciously nutty. As soon as you see that deep golden color, remove the pot from the heat and I like to pour it into a separate container to help stop the cooking. You can see how beautifully golden that looks. This is essentially really hot oil, so you want to be very careful when handling it. Once you have it in your container, you want to just let this cool to room temperature. When the brown butter is cool, it's time to get to cookie making. I have a medium bowl, and I'm going to add two cups of finely milled almond flour, as well as three quarter cups of coconut flour, and I'll be sure to have a list of metric measurements in the description box. Now I'm adding half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Now this is a very important ingredient to this cookie. It's going to make it nice and soft and give it a great chewy texture. And I'm adding my leavening. I have one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Whisk all of these dry ingredients together to combine them and make sure to work out any lumps that might be present in the almond flour. Then just set this aside for a minute and we'll work on the butter mixture. To a large mixing bowl, I'm gonna add my browned butter that has cooled. You can see it's thickened up quite a bit. Don't worry about trying to get those little bits out of the bottom, that's just some milk solids we don't need. It smells amazing and our cookies are gonna be delicious. To the butter, I'm adding three quarters of a cup of powdered erythritol. I like the Swerve brand. If you don't have powdered, you can use granular erythritol, but I like the texture that the powdered erythritol gives the cookies a little bit more. Next I'm adding one quarter cup of the Lakanto Golden. It's a monk fruit erythritol blend and I really like this sweetener in the cookies. It has a little bit of that caramelly flavor that you would get from brown sugar. Then add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And this is an ingredient I know is going to be controversial among the keto community. I'm using a teaspoon of blackstrap molasses. Now I know that strict ketoers will not like this ingredient, but it's a very little amount of carbs and it's here just to add a little bit of that brown sugar flavor. It makes the cookies delicious, but if you're not comfortable using it, it's absolutely okay to omit it. Whisk all of these ingredients together until they're nice and smooth. Next, add three large eggs and whisk those into the mixture. You'll see this butter mixture starts to thicken up. Don't worry, that's completely normal. 
Now add the dry ingredients to the butter mixture and stir everything together with a spatula until it's thoroughly combined. Then it's time for the chocolate. I use a half a cup of sugar-free chocolate chips. I like the Lily's brand. I didn't have chocolate chips, so I took a Lily's chocolate bar and cut it into chunks. Lily's happens to be my favorite brand of sugar-free chocolate. It's sweetened with stevia and I believe a little bit of erythritol. It has a really nice rich chocolate flavor and it's really delicious in these cookies. Fold the chocolate into the cookie dough so it's evenly distributed. You'll notice the dough has thickened up quite a bit at this point. That's the xanthan gum and the coconut flour both absorb quite a lot of moisture and gives us a really nice thick dough that's very much like a traditional cookie dough. Once everything's all combined, I'm covering it with plastic wrap and I'm gonna let this chill in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. That's gonna let the coconut flour and the xanthan gum fully hydrate and give the dough a chance to rest and all those flavors come together. Now that the dough is chilled, I'm gonna take off the plastic wrap and just set that aside and then we can start forming our cookies. Line a baking sheet with some parchment paper so the cookies won't stick. And I'm using a cookie scoop but if you don't have a cookie scoop, you can roll these into one or one and a half inch balls. Once all the cookies are portioned out, I'm gonna take that plastic wrap and I'm gonna gently press on each cookie to flatten them to about half an inch thick. You can make it thicker or thinner depending on how you like your cookie. A thicker cookie is going to be more chewy and a thinner cookie is going to be more crisp all the way through. This recipe makes 23 cookies exactly with my cookie scoop. If you're rolling balls and doing it by hand, I'm sure you can make a full two dozen. If you don't want or need to bake the full 23 or 24 cookies, you can pop the tray into the freezer until the dough is frozen solid through. Then store them frozen in a Ziploc bag and just pull out what you need. Just be sure to add a couple of minutes to the baking time. This unfrozen dough is going into a preheated 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes. You're looking for the edges to be golden brown, but the centers will still be very soft. Cookies made with alternative sweeteners are very fragile, fresh out of the oven, so it's really important although I know it's very difficult, that you let these cool for at least 20 minutes so that they don't fall apart when you pick them up. Okay, I let these cool enough to handle and they're still nice and warm, which is my favorite way to eat them, but you can see they're nice and chewy on the inside and have a wonderful cookie texture. They smell amazing and taste even better. I promise you that brown butter is really the key to getting a nice, rich, deep, buttery flavor in these cookies. These are a great treat for picnics and I really love having something to offer to guests. I really love this recipe and I hope you do too. With any keto recipe, it's important to understand the macronutrients. For this recipe, each one cookie contains 161 calories, 14 grams of fat, three grams of protein, and two grams net carbs. The net carbs are calculated by taking the total carbs, subtracting fiber, and subtracting sugar alcohols. I use an app called Carb Manager to calculate these macronutrients, and it's based off of the brands and ingredients that I used in this video, including that tiny bit of molasses. If you want to see more sugar-free, low-carb, or keto recipes, give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos and click the bell icon to turn on post notifications to be notified every time I upload.